Hello and welcome to part 3 of the series on how to create a chess game with ReactJS. In this part we are going to make the chess pieces movable by clicking on them, dragging and letting go. And then when we drop them, we want to make them uh, stay on the uh, tile which we drop them. So, to get started, we are first going to remove the arrows and the warnings that we have right now. In our console, we see that the first warning we have is that each child in a list should have a unique key prop. This is in the chessboard render method. So let's open up our chessboard. And right here, I think, yes, it is the part where we render our tiles. So each tile should have a unique key prop. And the key prop should be unique. So we are just going to create a combination of I and Y. Um, or sorry, I and J. Um, because those are two unique values which we have. Every combination is unique. Um, so let's see, type in I and J, like so. Um, and now when we save this, um, our key will look something like this. We have 0, 0, then we have 1, 0, 2, 0. So this is what our keys are going to look like. And when we save this up and refresh the page, we see that the key arrow is gone. And actually, the other arrow is gone as well. We don't get the uh, image uh, alt arrow anymore. That's really nice. Uh, so when we look in the tile, we have our image right here. And we want to make it draggable. So first thing that we are going to do is we are going to instead of creating an image of this, we are going to create a div with a background image. And the reason we are doing this is because um, our image, um, when we drag it, the browser thinks we are trying to drag a file, which is actually not what we are trying to do. So look what happens when I do this. I drag the piece, I drag the image. It thinks we want to open the image in a new tab. Well. That's not it because we don't want to open an image. So to prevent this from happening, we are not going to render an image with a background image. So let's see right here. We are going to create a div. And we are going to give it a class name, or sorry, a style of background image. And then the background image will be a URL. And then we are going to use the image right here. And then when we remove this, we should only have the div on the dark tiles. So let's see how that works. We don't see the divs on the dark tiles right now. So when we click on the dark tile, we see that we have the div right here and the image right here. So it is loading correctly. But as you can also see, the image doesn't have a width and a height. So let's give it a width of 100 pixels, height of 100 pixels. And then we see our image is um, repeating four times. So we can uh, fix this by saying background repeat to no repeat, like so. As you can now notice, the image is in the upper left. We want to center it. So as you can already guess, background position, center. Like so. And then we want to make it a lot bigger. So background size will be 80 pixels, like so. And this is what we are going to add to our um, background div or our div. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to give a class name to our div right here, which is chess piece. And then we're going to open up our tile at CSS and in our tile, we're going to target the chess piece and we want to paste the values that we have copied like so. Um, and now when we save this up, we will see that all the chess pieces are appearing right. So the light pieces are images and the dark pieces are uh, background divs. So when we click this, we get an image and this happens. But when we click this, we don't get an image. We actually cannot click on it anymore. But um, we're going to fix it in a second. We are first going to convert the, the white um, pawns or the white pieces also to a, a div with background image. So let's take this and put it right here. And let's refresh the page and look in our inspector. So right now we have every piece in the board, but one thing that we uh, also notice is that on the tiles where we don't have pieces, we still render the chess piece. And as you can already see, we have background image URL undefined. We render an undefined background image, which is not good. So actually we only want to render a piece if the tile contains a piece. So to say that easier, we only want to render a piece if the image is not known. 
let's do the check right here we want to say if image is not null then we want to render this div same right here if image is not null then we want to, want to render this div right here so this is actually the same as saying uh, image not equal to null then we want to render this so this is actually the long way of saying this so we like to keep it short so we're just going to remove that and now when we uh, open up our editor well our inspector and we select a tile we can see that this doesn't have a child anymore and that the um, tiles with uh, chess pieces do have childs so that's nice we don't render um, too many elements which we don't use that's good we like to keep it clean um, and next up we are going to try to make the chess pieces movable so first off when we hover over a piece we want the mouse to become a uh, grabbing cursor so uh, let's see we already added a class to our piece and we're going to use that class so chess piece hover and we want to say cursor grab so when we hover over a piece as you can see we are trying to grab the piece now when i click on it nothing happens but that's okay we're going to fix that right now because we can say tile this piece active cursor grabbing like so if we save this up and we grab a piece we get a nice little squish grab so when we move the grab is uh, disappearing so um, that's actually not what we want and to fix this we actually want to um, make the piece actually move or uh, follow the mouse so let's see how are we going to do that we are going to implement this moving functionality inside of our chessboard because if we let the piece move itself that, that that's no good we want to make the chessboard move the piece so that all the functionality is in the chessboard and the pieces are just pieces they shouldn't know how to move it should be in the uh, chessboard in the upper component so um, right here we want to create an on mouse down event like so then we want to execute a function and this function will be um, let's see function um, and then we say grab piece um, and then we want to execute this function right here this function exec expects a parameter which will be of react.mouse event uh, so uh, how do i know this when i hover over here we see that it is the parameter e is of type react.mouse event um, and as we can also see we get an html div element mouse event um, we could also add that to here like so um, and now when we say e uh, we can actually um, access all the variables and values from um, from the element so what we want to do is we want to first console.log e and then the target of e so now we log the target of the how do we call it the element that we are trying to grab um, and let's see we get an error ah, okay so it should be just um, like so and if we save this up and now when we click on the chessboard we should see this console lock appearing so right here we are going to click and we get the class uh, tile white tile because we click on this we get the correct element that's good when we click here we get this element nice when we click here we get the chess piece nice okay so now we see that the um, the clicking is working and we get the correct items so um let's see when we click we want to um, move the chess piece to our cursor so um we actually only want to do this when we click on a chess piece so if we click right here we don't want to do that so how do we know if we click a chess piece we look at the classes that it has as you see the chess piece has a class of chess piece and the tile doesn't have that so right here we are going to say um, if e dot target dot class list and as you can see it doesn't know the variable class list so we are first going to um, cast it to an html element element equals e dot target as html element like so and right now we can say element.classList contains 
chess piece. So only when we um, grab a chess piece, then we want to console lock the element, for example. So if it's all good, we shouldn't see any loss right now. So I'm clicking, but we don't see anything. And we click here. Yes, we see the chess piece. Okay, so that's good. Um, next up, we want to make the chess piece follow the mouse. So when we click on it, we want the chess piece to move from here to the mouse. So let's see. Um, we want to say uh, element dot style dot position equals absolute. We want to give it an absolute position. Then we want to get the uh, let's see the uh, mouse y and mouse x positions. So x equals the uh, e dot client x and y equals e dot client y. Like so. I want to um, set off the uh, element by the x and the y of the mouse. So style dot left equals x. Element dot style dot uh, top equals y. And then instead of saying this, um, as you see, we have an error because it should be a string. We are going to say this x and then pixels, like so. And we are going to do the same for the y. But instead of saying x, we're going to say y, like so. And now when we save this, and we click on a piece, you see that it is um, moving towards our mouse, kind of. Actually, it's moving away, but that's because of the offset. So our pieces are 100 by 100 pixels, and it's grabbing it from the top left. So we actually want to calculate this offset right here. Minus 50, which is the offset. And now when we click on a piece, yeah, we click on the center of the piece. It automatically moves to the center of the mouse. That's nice, that's what we actually want. Um, and next up, we want to move the piece. So when I click, I want to move it across the board. So right now, I'm in the move, the piece is just staying behind. It's, um, it's like chilling at the back. So that's not what we want. We want to uh, move the piece with our mouse. So let's implement that. We are going to implement an on mouse move functionality. And then we want to say move piece e and then right here underneath the grab piece we're going to say function move piece like so and then let's see um, we want the element again so, um, and then we want to console that log the element so let's just look at what we get right now so when we refresh the page, um, we get a lot of elements, as you can see on the right side. Um, but right now we get the element of the tile. Now we get the piece. And if we click on it and move it, we see that it slowly went from uh, the piece, right here, to the tile. So how could this happen? Well, it is because when we move our piece, oh, um, it is not moving with us, so the, the, the object under our cursor is slowly transitioning from the piece to the tile. So to fix this, we want to, um, let's see, check first of all if we are dragging a piece, like so. And then we want to do this, so the moving part, right here. Um, and let's see, um, then we want to log the element. So let's check if uh, if the element is still um, transitioning from a chess piece to a tile. And now when we click on it, oh, oh, okay. So as you see right now, um, when we move our mouse and we move over the pieces, we are actually dragging them without clicking on them. So how does this happen? Um, in our code, we say when we move uh, move the piece or move the mouse. We want to look at the element underneath the mouse, and then we want to move it. Okay, so that's not good. We only want to move um, the piece that we are actually grabbing. So what we are going to do is we are going to save the grabbing piece in a variable. Let, um, let's see, active piece equals, and then we're going to say null, and this will be of type HTML element or null, like so. And once we um, once we grab a piece, we want to set it. 
So um, active piece equals element. And then instead of um, looking at the element underneath the mouse, when we move a piece, we want to look if we have an act active piece, if that, is, uh, if that is not null. So we're going to remove this. And we want to set the active piece right here. But as you can see, we now get an error. Object is possibly null. Okay, so we want to make sure the active piece is set. And then um, we check if the active piece is a chess piece, which actually it should be. Because right here we know that it is a chess piece. Um, so actually this is redundant. Um, and then instead of setting the, act uh, the element, we want to set the active piece with this. So if we save this up and refresh the page, um, we don't move the uh, pieces anymore when we hover over them. But that's good. Now when we click, you see that the piece is following our trail. But um, as you can also see, the piece is not stopping. So um, yeah, little problem. We didn't implement the drop function yet. So let's see. Uh, we are going to implement an on mouse up. So um, and it will be the drop piece function. We're going to implement it under here, like so. Um, and then we want to check if we have an active piece. So if we don't have a piece, we don't, don't want to do anything. But if we do have an active piece, we just say active piece equals null. So we reset the active piece. So let's see how that looks. So let's close it. When I drop, it don't follow anymore. I can just grab another piece. So this actually works, I think. Yeah. So right now we can move the pieces. We can drop them on the board. We can not yet take enemy pieces, but that is what we are going to implement next time. Um, and also one thing I'm noticing is that we can move the pieces outside of the board, which is not what we want because we want our pieces to be staying inside of the board so they, uh, yeah, they don't escape or something. <laughs> next time we are going to finish moving the pieces. We are going to constrain them inside of the board and we want to make them snap to the tile which we are putting them in. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you could follow along. Give a like down below, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!